government established the National Estuary Program. And basically, they wanted to clean up big areas like Hudson Bay and Chesapeake Bay. And we had to convince them that they needed one little tiny bay in their program to, as a, something to show how people could get things done. So we thought that they might be convinced, and by golly, we got it done. Well, first of all, we had to get some support going, and PG&E helped us, this Friends of the Estuary group, to put on a membership drive, and we got 2,000 members, and Jack Lovane put on a spot for us on TV, and we got a lot of good publicity and got the whole thing started. Because we had a, a sure thing going, we were able to tell the legislators, we have the horses to do this thing, and we're not asking for any money. <laughs> <laughs> and they loved that. <laughs> so, so many wonderful people that worked on it so hard for so long. It took us more than 10 years to get, get the thing going, to get into the National Estuary Program. Uh, and you are? Bill Newman. Oh, yes. OK, I know the name, but I just don't know good, you. Good okay. to see you. I'm the current docent trainer. I'm Carolyn Frank. I got to be a docent for people like you just saw. And that's the way I got really started, learning about it. Because once you get to know more about it, your perceptions improve and you see everything that's going on so much better. You know, one of the great things they did was to build the exhibits that show the ecology of the bay. It's the best place around here where you can really see everything and how it all fits together in one way of life. I'm just so pleased with what they did with it. Well, so as executive director of the Land Conservancy of San Luis Obispo County, um, we focus on the entire county, as is implied by our name. However, the estuary is one of the very unique and fragile ecosystems in our county and is near and dear to all of our hearts on the staff and board. And we're grateful that the Morro Bay National Estuary Program is, you know, is focused on the estuary. And we've been um, glad to partner with them and really see, it's just really, meaningful for us to be able to protect such a beautiful place. People are uh, moving to the area and populations building up to be expected, I think. Um, so those programs become even more important as that uh, starts to happen. I, I think what's really cool is that you don't have to go to an aquarium, anyone, like us or visitors, to have sea otters such a short distance away. And my, one of my favorites is all the little the little um, when they have their pups, pups. yeah, and, uh, they're so close. I mean, people can just drive up to the rock and hop out. How many places do, you, do people really get to do that? Mm -hmm. Some of my the greatest times is when we have family on board and uh, we get to experience just life on the water. It's the, the most uh, uh, ordinary day can turn into an incredible storm, you know. And that happened one time when my parents were on board; they were visiting, and. Uh, the weather report was coming out of the south and it was going to be really bad, really bad. So we actually had a little family meeting. We sat here at the table and we're like, okay, this is our last chance to get off the boat right now or we can go get a, you know, get a hotel room or something or, or you know, see what it's like to be on board. And so they decided they wanted to stay, which was really fun. And, you know, a couple hours later, though, got really crazy and big swells. And, uh, you know, right here in the harbor, we never think it really gets that bad, but maybe one day a year, it can come out of the south over uh, Montana de Oro and really w whip up a pretty big swell. So it's, ex it's really fun. Three in the morning we go outside and there's windy and howly and it's just something you don't really experience on land, that, that perspective. Ter Terry and I have done a lot of sailing up and down the coast and Morro Bay is one of the more protected estuaries along our coast and um, in terms of in terms of being a really, it's a very important place for wildlife and people to, to have a, such a unique, unique place. I am optimistic about the future because so many people cherish it and treasure it from the fishermen to the visitors to the residents here and, and to the people that are passionate about protecting it.
people look at the bay and they just see a bay, but there's so many uh, coves and shoreline that's different. The sand dunes are different from the scrub and Shark Inlet. Shark Inlet's a wonderful place to yes. go in kayaking. It's at the southernmost end of the bay. The, the, the bay was just loaded with these little surprises. Right. Yeah. When I first moved here, the uh, estuary program, I don't know if it was Friends of the Estuary, or estuary program itself, were very nice to assign me uh, uh, collecting uh, water samples on the bay, which I enjoyed. I started it. There was a seep there just above where, what's that, a Morrow comes into the bay. Yeah, I, 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 my assignment was, was from Easy Chair Beach yeah. to, to Sand Mountain. Yeah. Uh, so I had, I had to, to boat over there and, and, and sample along there. The energy that goes into keeping the bay pristine, and, and I, see, I see that every time I go out on the bay, I'm, I'm, I was really happy that they put a monitoring station out, out in the bay. There's, that's, that's self monitoring, and they got all the data from it. it it's, it's marvelous what, what the estuary program has done. Six months ago, I was out sailing with, with a, a, my wife and I were out sailing with another couple on the Nausicaa, and um, a group of dolphins came into the back bay, about 15 or 20 of them. They had chased a, a bait ball all the way from the from the opening of the of the mouth of the bay all the way into the back bay, and they were working this bait ball. And the, but that was that was amazing. I've had four heart attacks, and I've come back from every one slowly. This last one was was, was kind of slowed me down, and I couldn't get into the boat by myself. Tim helped me in the boat, and we sailed for almost two hours, and we ghost. It's called ghosting was well, just enough wind to move the boat, and we're about, well, it depends, 15 to 20 feet offshore. You can see the bottom. The pace you go if you walked, and you can see everything, and you can see how it's changed. And we just sailed all the way down into Shark Inlet, and just, it was the best two hours. It, it made life worth living for me just to be able to no really okay, yeah. because when I, I thought I'd never get back out in that boat again my name's Jamie Irons I'm the mayor of Moore Bay um, the importance of the bay to me is probably not unique to so many in, in Moore Bay. Everybody who is drawn here, there's so many people that you know experience it on a daily basis, whether they work the waterfront. Oh gosh, probably the most visual and touching one. We're married here in Moore Bay, and our wedding photos were at um, Windy Cove. So we had our, our photographs on, at Windy Cove by, right by the museum. So I think that's probably a very memorable moment for us. Um, it's a favorite spot of hers, it's a favorite spot of mine, and if you haven't gone back to the museum or Windy Cove, um, that's just another spot on the bay where you, know, you go to different places and every single one has a little special, special place. We have the benefit of having the National Estuary Program here in the bay. Um, they provide the education to all of us, and uh, with that education, it enhances our responsibility and knowledge on how we need to care for the bay. It's, it's definitely you know, a beautiful um, place that we have here in, in our backyard, and uh, you know, having it stay that way, maintaining it and protecting it is one of the vital and important things we need to do. constant challenge for us and certainly it's part of our jobs and we work with our partners like the National History Program to try and educate and advise people and, and get the word out and on the back end of course. I always like to, to check in on the travelers that are coming through Morro Bay. They come into Morro Bay and they tell us, wow this is such a gem of a place. You're so lucky to be here and then I think, yeah I am, I, I really do feel lucky to be here but it would be fun to go out and adventure too. <laughs> we had a call from some concerned citizens that there was a
pod of dolphins that were stuck way, way in the back bay. It turned out by the time we got there, all the dolphins had gotten out but one. Uh, back in the Cuesta Inlet, we were able to get it into a sling, uh, get it in the back of a truck, drive it out to the beach just north of the rock, and released it successfully. Uh, never ended up showing back on the beach that we know, so we assume it turned out okay, but for a day we were dolphin herders. Uh, one of the sea otter uh, biologists here, they had a, they were in the bay one day and, and uh, one of our previous harvestal officers has since retired was out assisting them and they were out capturing otters in the bay to tag them and they had netted an otter, you know, they snuck up on it close enough, net it, got it in the boat and the otter absolutely turned on them and had them all at the edge of the boat up on the bow ready to dive off because it was just an absolute menace on the boat. And was, the otters are not nice when they're trapped. I just feel so grateful that there are people that are dedicating their life to keeping the estuary a clean, safe place for the future. Um, with having the estuary program here in Morro Bay, I think it's, um, it's so important to the community. I mean, the health of the bay is critical to this, this whole area out here and probably to the west coast. A lot of species that probably rely on this estuary. Well, my mother, um, she worked on uh, sport fishing boats at Amora Bay in San Simeon since um, about 1969. And in 1979, she got a captain's license, and I got mine in 1994. And then our daughter, uh, 2004, she got a captain's license also. So it was, it was like three generations of women captain in the bay here. Well, the, the, the waterfront itself is um, a great place for tourists just to walk along. And Kind of unique here because you uh, have an actual working waterfront, still a, a diversified harbor. Because of the Morabay National Estuary Program, I see a lot of good things because they're working to you know, keep it preserved. And, uh, uh, and as, oh, it seems like uh, people are a lot more aware today of pollution and not polluting things. And uh, there's always, it seems like there's always something being done to improve those things along those lines. We see the water quality getting a lot better. I, I'm proud because it's a, it's a tight-knit community. The, the fishermen along here, even the you know, the people that walk along the waterfront and care about the harbor and the bay. And it's just always a good feeling being down here. My name is Evelyn Daybritz. I'm a docent here at the Museum of Natural History. I think what I really like is sharing it with the children. And of course, the children, they don't know what an estuary is, so we try to uh, educate them about the estuary and how important it is. I think the things that the kids enjoy most, uh, when we walk along here at Windy Cove, we go over here and I turn over the rocks to show them some of the creatures that are along the shore. Of course, they all love those crabs that immediately pop out. I applied to the uh, National Estuary Program for a grant. First grant that I received was for how the innkeeper worm got a full house. They chose that story out of the several that I had because the innkeeper worm is right out there on our estuary. There are all kinds of creatures that come down into his burrow, a scale worm, a little uh, pea crab, a goby fish, and they all live down there in this U-shaped uh, basement. And all of these wonderful illustrations were done by my friend and docent, um, Isabel Hoffman. And for the grant, uh, I, res I had to give away 400 free books to schools, museums, and libraries. So all of our school districts in each school have a book in the library and then some have been distributed to teachers. And I received extremely positive feedback from the teachers that received them. I think it's really a, a great program for the children uh, to learn about the estuary. I'm the owner of 
the uh, motor yacht Papa Gallo uh, here on Morro Bay. We are a dinner cruise business. Uh, we cruise the bay on, on most of our parties. And to date, we've done, we have had over 10,000 people go through this venue since we've uh, opened back in 2005. The estuary, uh, it is very important to our business because people that visit this area, they like the wildlife. We like to call it a, a kind of a National Geographic moment, uh, especially when we get in with all the seabirds, uh, the pelicans, and, and then the sea lions and the otters. Uh, it's nice because it's untouched. Uh, certainly, it was, it's good that they designated this area uh, as they have because it is untouched and there, there is quite a bit of wildlife, in, especially in the back bay. I tell you what touches me, is I watch the people on paddle boards, kayaks, uh, little small boats, I watch, uh, watch the people go by, and uh, seeing how much they are enjoying, the, and they're laughing, that some are falling in the water, some are families, uh, they have, then they have the little electric boats that go by, um, so I guess I'm, at those times, I'm not that keyed in so much to nature. I'm keyed in to the people that are enjoying the nature. And very few places offer what we offer. about it up and down the coast. Uh, we currently travel, well, we fish into Mexico and into Canada and every place in between. Uh, I think the, the estuary and the harbor is in wonderful condition. And frankly, it's been cared for. As a matter of fact, we received a grant from the estuary here a short while ago, a year ago, to, uh, to get two very large sanding devices that were very expensive, about 800 bucks a piece, I think, as I recall. And they vacuum, as, the, as you sand, they vacuum up all of the debris. You can actually sand inside your kitchen with uh, about zero debris from the sanding. So this keeps anything blowing from blowing into the water or inadvertently being dropped into the water. So uh, it was a, a plan put together by the Morro Bay Commercial Fishermen's Organization in coordination with the estuary program and the harbor department. We all you know, love this place that we, we get to call home, that we work in, and it's, uh, you know, it's certainly special to all of us. That's why we're here in Morro Bay. It, it, it kind of relates the estuary and the, goes with the city of Morro Bay. It's just it all blends into one absolutely beautiful place to uh, spend our time on the planet. We had a little sailing skiff that we kept in uh, Cuesta Inlet. We often would take that out sailing and uh, sail over to the sand spit and it was kind of like a trip to the islands. It seemed like you step foot on that sand spit and you're sometimes in a place it feels like where nobody's been before. Amazed at the beauty of this place and every time I walked up today thinking the same thing is this, this is absolutely unique. We are so blessed to have this here for our enjoyment and if there's something that I can do to help try to maintain what we what we have and to try and preserve this incredible habitat here uh, I'd, I'd do almost anything because it, it's it's unfortunately what California used to be 50 years ago I feel pretty comfortable I, I feel like uh, uh, the National Estuary Program and the other support groups that are here are in a good spot they, they have good community relations and good support amongst all these varied partners and that, you know, there's every reason to think that we might be able to leave this one for our grandkids.